Good morning, and thank you for joining it with Six Pack, the Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports at just six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbris. I cover the Wisconsin Badgers for Athlon Sports, but today we are talking Green Bay Packers alongside my good friend, Ryan Eilers, is going to join the show. Uh, Wisconsin Badgers aficionado, but also Arizona Cardinals aficionado. Uh, a Diamondbacks and, and Phoenix Suns fan as well. Arizona sports all around. Uh, just a great resource for today's conversation where I don't know what's what's going to happen in this game. Um, and based on my preliminary conversations with Ryan, I don't think he's quite sure either. Uh, so I think this is going to be a fun one. Breaking down the Green Bay Packers matchup this week with the Arizona Cardinals. And so we welcome to the show Ryan Eilers, thank you so much for coming on, Ryan. It's always, always, always a pleasure to talk to you. It's always good to chop it up with you and talk ball. Um, let's let's start where I think Arizona is a little bit weaker, um, and that's on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I don't think we've seen the Packers at 100% on offense so far this year, uh, but Arizona has been kind of a middling defense uh, o- overall to to put it nicely they they're not super stout on either running or pass plays um w- what has kind of been the the cardinals achilles here thus thus far on defense yeah i think you saying middling is actually being kind i think the the, the one thing that they struggle with is they just don't have the personnel yet this is year two of the jonathan gannon um uh tenure um they try to overhaul it as much as they could, but they're really kind of just going on draft picks, street free agents, the best they can do. And I, th- I think their Achilles heel is 100% going to be their run defense. Mm. Um, it's been exposed multiple times by good rushing attacks. I mean, Jaden Daniels had it cooking enough for the commanders to keep them off balance that Brian Robinson could just run at will. The, the Lions ran it down their throat. When when Josh Allen decided that he didn't have to be a pocket passer the whole game and just took off, they had no contain, no rush lane integrity. And if, if Jordan Luck uses his legs on Sunday, just even to get just 10, 15 yard first downs, it, it might be a long day for the Cardinals. Yeah, they. Th- this was not a good defense last year either of course second second worst in the league in uh epa per drop back and yeah i know you have buda baker back there but like like you said they're relying on a lot of draft picks they're really 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 young at, at defensive back uh and i think you, you probably feel good about max melton long long term but development is you know a, a work in progress of course um i i even like so some of the guys they got you know Later, later on day two, uh, Elijah Jones out of Boston College, and is Jaden Davis seeing seeing real snaps th- this year? Uh, seventh round pick out of Miami. No, I don't even think he made the roster. I think he's on oh, our okay. practice squad. Got it. Uh, and even Elijah Jones, he's he's been banged up in and out of the mm. lineup or in and out of practices, like getting limited run in fall. Um, but yeah, that 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 defensive back crew is is very young and. Their, their notable free agent this offseason was Sean Murphy Bunting, who had a great run for the Buccaneers during their Super Bowl run. But mm-hmm. one could argue that Tom Brady can carry anyone to, to mm-hmm. world championships. So I don't know if it was necessarily the defensive side, especially when they had the other players that Tampa Bay had. But, yeah, when you got Sean Murphy Bunting and a young Max Melton, who I really like, played at Rutgers last year. I mean, you know, we have a mutual love for the Badgers, and we saw mm-hmm. – uh, Bryson Green torch him on a couple of them, but yeah, long term he's going to be good. You're right though, Buddha. Buddha doesn't have the numbers to even back up being a top ten safety anymore. He's just more of a yeah. I don't want to disrespect him, but he's a lot more like the Jamal Adams role, where he's just coming up in a box filler. He's not necessarily playing pass coverage, and that's kind of what they've needed because their run defense mm. has been so bad. Where where is that? Um... Where where is that lack of talent stopping the run coming from? That lack of ability to stop the run, rather. Uh, I think the lack of resources um, to overhaul it completely. I mean, I know we talk about it on the Badgers all the time. Just that it takes a while to get those defensive line prospects in there, and mm-hmm. um, sadly, two of the two of their bet, two of their what they thought were going to be their better front seven players 
haven't played yet this year. They had BJ Ujolari. He was a second round pick out of LSU last year, really came on at the end of the season last year, uh, tore his ACL in training camp. And their first round pick, number the 27th overall, Darius Robinson, which is a mountain of a man from Missouri, uh, just returned to practice today. So mm-hmm. two of their top two round picks in the last two years drafts aren't on the field right now. So mm-hmm. a lot of it, they're just kind of relying on, for lack of better term, bargain bin defensive linemen. Like they got a young guy, Roy Lopez, who's just been balling for him, but he was an undrafted free agent. I think he was working at Walmart before we got him on the practice squad. And he's been a revelation. And they got Dante Stills, which is a second year player out of West Virginia that they got in the sixth round. But a lot of it, it's older guys like the LJ Colliers, who had a better run in uh, Seattle. We had Bilal Nichols, who had a good run with the Bears for a little bit. We had Justin Jones for two games, who didn't grade out very well in PFF, but ended up tearing his, I think it was his pectoral muscle or his biceps. I, yeah. I know it was an upper body injury out for the year. So anytime they do get any bodies, it seems like they're still trying to weather the attrition. Uh, th- that is rough for a going going up against a, a Packers rushing attack that when when Josh Jacobs gets the ball, when, when he is moving, he, he looks really dangerous. Um, he looks closer to, I think, what we would have expected from him er- earlier in his career with the Raiders. Um, he's he's been exciting. Um, and I know some Packers fans are always ready to complain about the number of carries Green Bay's number one running back is getting um, and think that he should get more. Um, you know, he's 4.5 yards carry, not not crazy numbers by any means. And a couple of fumbles have, have hurt him early on, but uh, it sh- should be a good test for how much do the Packers want to run the ball if um, the Packers think they can get a- Arizona there. Um, I, I want to flip before we get to the the i want to say big bad man but it's not that big uh before we get to him uh let's get to the offense where there is a little bit of weakness the cardinals run game is like just not anything special at all when when i look at it uh is this just a matter of not having a a bona fide number one there is it a matter of um being a little bit old um, at the running back position, what's what's up with the Arizona Cardinals rushing attack right now? That isn't Kyler Murray. Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing, again, is going to be injuries. They're coming off mm. of last year where they were one of the top rushing offenses in the NFL. And then they had Paris Johnson Jr., their number six overall pick at Ohio State. He was on the right side next to Will Hernandez, a former second round pick of the Giants. And they really anchored down that right side. Um, all but uh, DJ Humphreys, our former left tackle. That's that team, that whole offensive line was together for 14 of the 17 weeks last year. And then we, you know, with DJ Humphreys tearing his ACL, they flipped Paris Johnson Jr. over to his traditional left side that he played at Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Um, they have Evan Brown, who is a uh, just kind of a, a savvy vet from the Seahawks playing left guard. They got Yelda Froholt, the Danish destroyer, playing center. But they had to break in a former first round pick. Jonah Williams, who was on the Bengals mm-hmm. at right tackle, and he tore his ACL, I believe, on the second drive of the first game against Buffalo. Which which um, was like, I mean, maybe supposed to be the hallmark signing of the free agent class for 100%. the Cardinals. And then, and then putting him, just that experience at right tackle, uh, years in the league, putting him next to Will Hernandez, they were hoping that they uh, they could really anchor that down. And then once he went, once Jonah Williams went down, it's been a rotating door. We've gotten down to our mm-hmm. practice squad, right tackle, the four stringer. Ooh. And then last game we had uh, Bosa, Nick Bosa roll up on Will Hernandez. And I don't know what's torn in his knee, but I would imagine it's not just one thing. So mm-hmm. our entire right side is uh, going to be backups coming into the game. Um, that's not fun against a Packers defensive front that includes a guy like Rashawn Gary, of course, even if he's having a little bit of a down year. Um, no, not, not very good. So concerns on the offensive line stopping. Is that more a, a run game concern, pass protection concern or both? I think it's definitely going to be a run game concern because pass game, uh, Drew Petzing, the Cardinals offensive corner, really likes to go 13 personnel. He's big on having mm-hmm. the three tight ends out there. So I think pass protection wise, mm-hmm. they're able to limit that exposure for even with somebody like Rashawn Gary and some of the, some of those dogs you have up there on front. 
it's when they're rushing five or six, they'll be able to probably match bodies a little bit. doesn't mean they're going to win every rep, hmm. but I think when you get to the run game, like you can't come out in 13 personnel and just think that you're going to run the whole time because you kind of telegraph what you're going to do, whether they're in base defense or not. So I think it's, they're going to have to get creative with their run game. I think what you're saying, why the run game hasn't been clicking as a whole. I think James Conner, he only had nine yards in the first half against San Francisco, but then had mm-hmm. 77 in the second half and they right. really leaned on him. So he's the type of guy that like, once he takes a little pounding, like he gets better as the game goes on. It's just, the Cardinals can't fall behind in these games like they did against Washington and like they did against Buffalo towards the se- early second half yeah, where they have to abandon that run game. Otherwise then everybody's pinning their ears back to go after Kyler. Where I think Arizona might get a little bit of reprieve. There is, there, there is only one Packer who did not practice uh, on Wednesday. And that was Devonte Wyatt, who the Packers really do rely on to plug the middle of the line. Um, and, and that kind of will act as a little bit of a segue into what I want to talk about next, which is Ky- Kyler Murray and his ability to extend plays uh, vis-a-vis the Packers defensive front, which has been surprisingly modest in terms of producing statistics this year. And I'm that's that's about as nicely as I can put it. Um, Rashawn Gary has not been up to snuff. Uh, Kenny Kenny Clark's not making as big of an impact as they can. You, you have guys like Colby Wooden, who the the team really thinks a lot of. You have guys like Lucas Van Ness, a first round pick from a year ago, who is not producing up at this level so far. They're, they're going into this season. You, you hired a defensive coordinator whose specialty is coaching defensive backs, and then I think the philosophy was there are, are enough guys up front who we have some kind of belief in to be able to generate pressure up front that somebody's just going to rise to the top and, and we'll be okay there. And that hasn't happened so far. Um, so what I said earlier is that there is, there is one, one big man who really scares me in this game and, and it's Kyler Murray and his ability to, to extend plays. Uh, ha- have we seen anybody this year keep Kyler Murray from extending plays or, or any time recently and, and, and what, what has that looked like uh, if you have any recollection of it? Yeah, a lot of it is if you go back and watch the the Detroit Lions game plan, it was masterful. They have they have a very – I know Aaron Glenn has always kind of been under fire because that Lions defense had underperformed for so long, but mm-hmm. he's really had his guys playing smart concepts where they had rush lane integrity, where if you keep him in the pocket, you have a much better chance – because mm. as as we were talking about before, and as anyone that's watched Kyler Murray play, he loves the off platform throws. He, I almost feel like he's more comfortable doing that than sitting in the pocket. Which maybe, yeah. maybe he might he likes to make the harder throw than he does the easier throw. He, he's always going for the three pointer and not the layups. <laughs> um, I think if you keep him in the pocket, you're fine. But you, they San Francisco tried that quite a bit last game, but they just had no contain because it. There were so many times I was, I was watching some cut-ups uh, from the game, and they would come out in either 12 personnel or 13 personnel, and they would run the read option. But they mm-hmm. wouldn't always do it in your traditional read option that we see more at the college level where they're reading the end. They would still block the end, but they're reading the linebackers. So watching if their receivers could get to the linebackers and cut them off, and that is what Kyler Murray was reading. So that his long mm-hmm. touchdown run where he put up the deuces from the 43-yard line yeah. – when he was sprinting, as soon as his tight end came in motion or um, on a comeback block and he sealed that side, he knew he was gone. Mm-hmm. And they they blocked Nick Bosa and they just washed him out of the play. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think gap integrity, rush lane integrity is going to be important, especially in obvious passing downs. But I think at some level you're going to have to have a spy too. They tried that with Warner quite a bit, but because James Conner was becoming more effective in the second half, he – you know, you can only cover one guy. So yeah, that kind of put him in kind of a box there. Yeah. Um, the, I want to hit all of those one, the rush lane integrity, making sure you don't give up the edge thing. That that's where ultimately I think I'm most concerned about with this Packers defensive front, because even in like really good Rashawn Gary seasons, the thing he cannot do is set and maintain the edge. He, he wants to crash inside that. That's what he wants more than anything in the world. Um, and, and so that's, that's why the, the Cardinals w- worry me there. Uh, when, when it comes to 
Murray being better out, outside of the pocket off script. I, I, I totally see that. Uh, Zach, Zach Cruz over at Packers wire wrote uh, earlier this week that when Kyler Murray holds the ball for more than two and a half seconds, he's completing two thirds of his passing attempts and averaging 9.1 yards per attempt uh, per pro football focus. It's bonkers. Just like how much better he is when it comes to the, like reading wide receivers getting up to the linebackers and setting a spy. I think where the Packers maybe have an advantage over a guy like Fred Warner or, or Nick Bosa, like you were talking about is if they can keep that guy as Edger and Cooper, who is incredibly quick. Um, I, I have a lot of confidence in him being the guy. If, if anybody is going to chase down Kyler Murray, um, but that has to rely on him not being taken out of, of a play. And he is, he is a rookie. Uh, so I think that might be a really big challenge for him when the, the linebackers otherwise on this roster are, are not good at all. Um, in my, in my opinion, um, I, I don't have a lot of confidence in, in them whatsoever. Um, do you, do you foresee a, a scenario in, in which just, Kyler Murray, I mean, runs for 200 ish yards in, in a game like this. Is that, is that something that he can do behind a, a, a battered offensive line? I mean, could he probably, he's not going to though. Drew Petzing, he's a Kevin Stefanski disciple. They love to have the quarterback be the maestro and mm -hmm. get all their playmakers involved. We Cardinals fans have been begging Kyler to run just because he's so electric Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple games where like, even in the commanders game, there were so many opportunities where like, just take it and take it and go. Um, but that's not the offense they want to run. Um, they saw it a little bit more against San Francisco because Nick Bosa is so fast off the edge that they use that speed against him. Mm -hmm. But I don't foresee Kyler running around. I mean, the biggest thing is if he's going to run around, he's going to stay behind the line of scrimmage, trying to look for the ball downfield. Yeah. I don't know if it's the trusting of the ACL. He just had his ACL sir. He tore his ACL about a year ago yeah. this month uh, against the Patriots on Monday Night Football. So he went through the last eight games of last year, but this is his first extended action back uh, through a full off season and all that kind of stuff. I just don't know that he's going to risk it. Um, yeah. Every time now he's been real smart about either getting down or getting out of bounds outside of that one where he threw the deuces up at the 43 for the most part, he's only ripping off 10, 15 yards and either getting down or getting mm -hmm. out. So it'd be real hard to get to that. Even the hundred yard mark, I'd be surprised. Do you think we've seen a drop off in, in his speed and his relative athleticism? Because the, the small amounts that I've watched him this season po post ACL tear, like, I, I don't think I've seen it. I, I think he looks still really, really, really good. Yeah. He's still, he's still incredibly athlete. I mean, he is only, I think, 26 yeah. coming back from the. I, I just want to see how fast he can get. Like, Packer fans, we know we talk about Brady Collins and this need for speed and all of that that we, we see here for the Badgers. But on, on that run that I was talking about with the from the 43 when he threw his hand up, uh, I think he got up to like 21 and a half miles an hour. And he's only, <laughs> I think, 11 months post ACL. So I'd like to see, like, what can he do, you know, two, three years where he has the confidence mm. in it. He didn't really have to open it up because after he hit the 43, he knew he was going. So he just had to run yeah. faster than the defender, but he didn't really have to open it up. Do you, do you get concerned with, with hit him extending plays and trying to make too much of it, uh, particularly with a guy like Xavier McKinney in the Packers secondary at safety who has had an interception in every single game so far? And, and if maybe some of that trying to extend play and doing something, uh, just trying to find something downfield could actually come back and, and bite him against a, a – really tough free ranging safety back there. I don't think so because Kyler just plays so smart. Uh, I'll, I'll never try to argue that he's the best quarterback in the NFL, but one of the more risk averse. I, I don't, don't say that. I, I, I 100% know that you would argue that, that he's one of the best. I, I would a hundred, I can a hundred percent imagine you saying that. Oh, he's absolutely top 10, but <laughs> I'm just saying like, he's be, the last few years. He's become, very I'll get good. a couple of varsity gold nails in you and you'll be, you'll be up to top three in, in, in minutes. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, that's a good, <laughs> Mike Kyler's my favorite quarterback we've ever had. So, uh, I mean, as an Arizona Cardinals fan, like if you think about everything that the Packers are and we're the opposite at the quarterback position, Kyler Murray is, probably a season and a half away from setting all the franchise records and he's only 26. So let that sink in. Um, I think he's, he's, he's a lot 
better with the ball. Like I saw the last few games of last year when he was playing against the Eagles and, all, and they had a pretty decent defense before they collapsed. And even the 49ers, it's, he doesn't necessarily put the ball in harm's way. He'll, he'll move to extend the play. And if it's not there, he'll just take it down and run. Even if he only gets six, seven yards, he is, he is like, and I'm, and I'm not comparing the two individuals on any level, but it kind of reminds me of the old Aaron Rodgers where he's looking, he's looking, he's looking, he's looking, but mm. he'd, he'd rather have 26 touchdowns and four interceptions than have like 26 touchdowns and nine interceptions by taking those five risks. Uh, Kyler is very similar. He's not from a stat mindset, but he's just very risk averse. Yeah. I mean, you see that he's, he ranks 23rd in the, in the league um, with an interception percentage. So very good. there, very, very, very low. Um, 23rd ranging from worst to best, I should say. Uh, so, so I see that in this game. And I know we've focused a lot on Kyler Murray here, but I think I, I wanted to because I feel like so much of this game is going to be decided by what what happens um, with, with him, how, how the Packers keep him in check. But if it's not going to be Kyler Murray, I, I want to see who you think might be a potential X factor in this game to determine um, who, who ends up coming out on top on Sunday. Yeah, the X Factor for me is going to be Trey McBride. Uh, I am what our Cardinals fans call a McBride's maid. I'm all for Trey McBride. He hasn't had his signature. He has a signature game or two every season since he's been in the NFL where he just goes bananas. Um, mm -hmm. And now with Marvin Harrison where we have a bona fide number one, a really good number two and Michael, Michael Wilson. We got Greg Dortch in the slot. And Zay Jones is coming back from suspension, who's kind of a journeyman but very good in the slot. Mm-hmm. If you're going to have Edger and Cooper, who's very fast spying Murray, I'd be concerned about who's going to match up with Trey McBride because mm. he's he's been a top five, six, seven tight end in the league the last couple of years. And I think that you see it, you saw it a lot against um, the Lions where they didn't want to necessarily force it to Marvin Harrison Jr., which I'm surprised we've gotten 22 minutes and we haven't talked about the fourth overall pick who's, you know, been having an up and yeah. down here, but I mean, great catch on fourth and five to, you know, march the Cardinals down the field in the last game. I, I, I respect Jair Alexander a lot. I've, you know, live in Wisconsin. I've watched my fair share of Packer games that that kid can play. Um, I don't know that they're going to try to force feed Marvin Harrison jr. And I think the front is going to get to Kyler fast enough that he's going to need a safety mm -hmm. blanket. And I think this is a, whether it ends up winning the game or not, this to me screams like a Trey McBride eight catches for 145 yards, and whether he sees the end zone will determine whether they win or not. But this seems like a fine Trey McBride at all cost game. That that makes sense to me, and like you mentioned, yeah, we we haven't I, I think spoken the the name Marvin Harrison Jr. so far, which is surprising because it is not every year that you see a guy come out of the draft and just immediately looks like a number one wide receiver on an NFL team. Like you, like you mentioned sometimes up and down, but he, he doesn't look out of place at all. And, and I know we saw him in college football last year. And I know that he looked like the best player in college football last year, mo most of the season, but even still, it is surprising to me just how much he, he does not look like a guy who is, you know, six months removed from college football right now. I, I mean, Eight, eight months, what, whatever it is. Um, how, how impressive has he been just changing what the Cardinals can, can do with the offense? I mean, he's been amazing for Kyler. Um, just that you see, like, I watch way too many YouTube clips and all this behind the scenes stuff. And it's like the work that he puts in, like a lot of people always use the argument, oh, the work they do is second to none until you like, you really get down to the nitty gritty. Like Marvin Harrison Jr. catches 300 footballs after practice every day. Like still, he did it. He did it at yeah. Ohio State. He still does it now. They they had JG uh, Jonathan Gannon, the head coach on record, telling him he needs to go home because he's <laughs> he, they need him to get rest because the next day he just he, they need him fresh. But he just wants to work, 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 work. I mean, he seems like a humble leader. He's a quiet leader. He says he says he literally says everything right. It's almost like. And I'll never and I'll never like wish this to be the case, but it's like you almost makes you think like he's a serial killer because there's <laughs> nobody that's this perfect in life that's not hiding something. But it's like the way he interacts with the media, the way he carries himself, the way he handles his business, the way he works. He is everything the Cardinals needed and more in kind of a uneasy time in their in their franchise.
Um, guys like that are super easy to root for. Uh, Connor Bedard of the Chicago Blackhawks is exactly the same same kind of guy. It's that the the, the staff ha- have to <laughs> all but scream at him to get get off the ice some days, um, and that's just super easy to to cheer for. Uh, all right, let's let's move into not necessarily predictions, but looking at what we think is going to happen here. Uh, if we are talking a little bit of prediction, I think this game's going to end up being a shootout. I, I think this has the potential to be a a marquee game of the NFL season. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think there is good reason for this game to get the at least the 325 treatment uh, on, on Sunday. Um, am I right about that, or, or am I making that up? This is a 325 game, right? No, this is a noon one. All right. Well, then, then I think it should have gotten the three twenty five treatment at least. Uh, hey, for somebody that's going to the game, I'm glad it's not because I don't want to be coming home at nine o'clock at night on Sunday. <laughs> Fair enough. Um. So, what if we are prognosticating a little? The Arizona Cardinals win this game. If what happens? Uh, they win the trenches. I mean, that you can say that about any football team yeah. of the history of football. But if they can at least slow down the run, keep Josh Jacobs in check uh, around his average four yards a carry, don't give up a lot of explosives, and and then in turn get James Conner going earlier in the first half, I think they have a, a, a good chance to be in the game. I, I don't necessarily – and maybe we'll get to the prediction part. I don't know that necessarily I see the Cardinals winning. Um, I also don't necessarily see a huge shootout just because I think the defensive backs – We'll keep it from being that. I think if this is going to be a high-scoring game, I, I see three or four rushing touchdowns because I, I don't I don't see tons of shots and explosives in this one personally. That's interesting to me because I I, I am I'm am, I am excited about the Packers defense, but I'm not entirely convinced. Um, and so I think they have defensive backs that can get got a little bit. Uh, there, there is Jair Alexander, but next to him, depending on who they play, if it's, if it's Eric Stokes, I, I don't think he has it anymore. Um, a, a, after a couple of freak injuries, leg, leg injuries, they, they have kind of taken away his, his athleticism. And, and that was a big part of what he could, he could do. Um, while he wasn't always the perfect polished, um, in technique cornerback, he, he, could make up for that with his athleticism and it's, and it's not there anymore. Um, and and the the defensive backs behind him are, you know, average at best. Um, so I, I can see that happening. I I can see the Arizona Cardinals winning just if, if they fail to contain Kyler Murray, I I don't think Arizona has to win on the ground. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think, um, taking away Josh Jacobs is necessarily key here because I, I think, I, I think Matt Lafleur <laughs> has a tendency to to abandon the run a little a little bit early anyway. Uh, so I, I think I just disagree a little bit with you on, on the game script, um, but but we'll see. Um, if if the Green Bay Packers win this game, uh, how how does it happen? Um, kind of how you just laid out. Uh, they do hit those. They get Jaden Reed down the field. They get Dontavian Wicks down the field. I don't know if. Uh... Romeo thy Romeo is going to be back or if he's still having a temper tantrum, but no, uh, he, cool he will he be back. He'll out. be back. I mean, if he wants to sit out, that's cool too. Like we're <laughs> already um, and Tucker craft needs to, to not go crazy again too. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think a lot of it is if Arizona can't control the playmakers, mm-hmm. uh, I think green Bay will win. Um, like we were talking about earlier with Max Melton and Sean Murphy bunting, Max Melton's only in his sixth game. Sean Murphy Bunting has maybe already worn out his welcome with his with his play. Um, we're we're excited about it. maybe him uh, filling Gatorade cups, just because he can't continue to get torched play after play after play on crossing routes uh, and man coverage. It seems like something you should know what you're doing by now. Um, so I think if, if Jordan Love plays a, a relatively turnover free game, I mean I think you you get your token one out there. I, I think I think Green Bay can win. I think the spread of five is fine. If he starts giving us Christmas presents early, then then I think all bets are off. But I, th- I think the Green Bay Packers will win if if Jordan Love keeps it some the relative turnovers in check and you hit those down the field passes to uh, those those playmakers. That that sounds about right to me. Um, the and yes, everybody on the Packers roster practice today except for Devontae Wyatt on the defensive line uh and that includes Romeo Dubs so he he should be practice or he should be playing on Sunday um 
I guess unless unless something new aggrieves him between now and then. Um, and I, I completely agree that there is there is not the, the talents at, at the back end of the defense for, for Arizona to make me feel like they're they going to be able to stop a, a passing attack for, from Jordan Love. And Jordan Love would have to kind of give away the game himself in order to do it um, where it would concern me, however, is that he has had a little bit of trouble connecting on these these deeper passes that he was so successful at late later uh, in last season. It's gotten him in a little bit of trouble this year. Uh, you have seen some really successful deep shots like the I'm just going to throw it into you quote unquote triple coverage, but also where only Jane Reed can get it throw um, last week against the Rams uh, that I think in nine times out of ten is probably picked off. Um it, so we'll see. He he can definitely get get himself in trouble. He did on a pick six that he should have just taken a safety on in, in that same game, right? Oh um, yeah. <laughs> it reminded me of the Kyler one in twenty twenty one when they were in the playoff game against the Rams. Mm, also, it was yeah. almost literally the same play, same end zone. He did the same move, same result. Yeah. Um. J- Jordan is just he's not the best at not. Hmm. There, there are times when he's trying to do too much. And I wonder now if some of this where like he, he has the third most air yards per attempt right right now uh, th- this season. A- and this LaFleur offense executes the Shanahan style offense executes way better if you are just kind of willing to take the middle of the field and what, what the defense gives you. Uh, but he, he loves throwing it deep, chucking it deep. We saw him do it uh, in college at Utah State and Maybe, maybe that's what the Packers need in this game, though. Um, so I, I don't know. Uh, Ryan, are there any last thoughts you want to get off your chest of, about this game between the Arizona Cardinals and the Green Bay Packers before we wrap up? No, I don't have anything. I, I think, like you said, I, this one might end up being the game of the week. I feel like I, I went through all the stats in part of the pre-show thing, and like I couldn't see anything that was like glaring because when I mm-hmm. when I look at you know common opponents, similar records. Uh, looking at, you know, where Kyler is compared to others that have played the Packers. And it's just, there's not anything that I just look at and boom, say, boom, this gives me, this gives me, Hey, they're going to have a tough game or, Hey, this is going to be a layup. I just, I think this is going to be a a close one. And I know we said shootout, but I think the Cardinals end up covering, but I think the Packers win, but I also say all bets are off. If it gets into the thirties, then I'll say whoever has the ball last wins. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. Uh, I like that. Um, that that is Ryan Eilers, a uh, uh, wonderful voice on, on these here internet's on the website, formerly known as Twitter at Ryan B Eilers, also of Talking Badgers. Uh, anywhere else, the kind people should find you, Ryan. Oh no, that's it. You don't want to hear my big dumb voice that much. <laughs> um, I I love hearing your big dumb voice. Um, Ryan, thanks so much for joining the Scotty Six Pack. We'll talk to you again very soon. Thanks again to Ryan Eilers for joining the show. Uh, we'll link his socials in the description as well as the Talking Badgers podcast. Uh, that is a conglomeration of some of my other uh, colleagues presented uh, by Athlon Sports and All Badgers. Uh, so we'll have that link too. You can find that Talking Badgers anywhere you are listening or watching to this podcast right now. Uh, thanks so much to Ryan Eilers. Uh, I should hopefully have another show for you tomorrow, Saturday. Um, it, it being an early football day, also an early women's hockey day. Uh, for me, I should be there covering that game. Um, although I think I'm also trying to get out to the men's hockey game that night. So uh, if you do not hear from me again tomorrow, you should hear from me again Sunday in your feed. Uh, and until then, thank you very much for listening to the Scotty Six Pack podcast. Uh, I've been your host, Kedrick Stumbers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbers. I cover the Wisconsin Badgers for Athlon Sports. You can also follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack or the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. Until we talk to you all again very soon, go Pack Go.